Want to make sure your pup transitions into your home without any hiccups? Then be sure to watch all the way to the end for the tips to puppy proofing your house. Before we begin, for the best puppy training tips and tricks, subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit the bell to stay notified when I post new content each week. Don't forget to check us out on our other social networks. You can grab the link in the description below. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog and the creator of 30 Days to Puppy Perfection, the online puppy training program where you can train your puppy from the comfort of home. Okay, you've picked out the perfect puppy and now it's time to set up your house. We are going to talk about where to keep your puppy for the first few weeks to a month, what supplies you should have on hand, and what you should be doing to ensure your puppy doesn't chew, ingest, or destroy anything in your home. Now, most eight-week-old puppies seem like a dream when you bring them home. They sleep a ton and they don't seem to have any interest in getting into trouble. <laughs> Just yet. Usually around 9 to 10 weeks, we start to see some more playfulness and curiosity from our pups. This means they're going to want to bite and chew and explore the world with their mouths. <laughs> it's going to be important to set up a designated puppy spot for your puppy to play and hang out in. This is not for sleeping, as we use the crate for bedtime and nap time. I'll talk more about that in a minute. I do recommend a puppy pen instead of full access to the whole home. When you bring your puppy home, one of the first things you'll start working on before you even step in the house is potty training. You'll be taking your pup to a designated potty spot outside and rewarding them right there in that spot, not when they come back in. I cover this and more inside this video, House Breaking a Puppy Fast. So, limiting the space is really important in your house. Otherwise, the more space we give our puppy, the more room they have to roam, and the more room they have to roam means they will need to go potty more frequently. We want to help our pups successfully go outside and not inside. So, limiting the space they have to play in and restricting their access to go potty all over the place is important. Inside your puppy pen, you're going to put a few toys that will be switched out every other day. This keeps things fresh and new for your pups so they don't get bored too easily. Now, I do put Nyla bones, marrow bones, and rope toys that are really tightly braided in the pen. It's important to only allow your pup to have a tightly braided rope toy as the loosely braided ones come apart and can get easily ingested by your puppy. This does pose a health concern. To keep a puppy busy in their pen, you can use toys like the Starmark Bobolot. This is one way I feed puppies their meals. It does slow down their eating so they avoid gulping their food. If you have a puppy that gulps their food too fast or doesn't chew all their food, you can check out this video. Something else I periodically add to my puppy's pen is a puppy gym setup. This can be a great way to work on desensitizing your pup to things touching them sounds they hear, and also can be a great busy toy to keep your puppy entertained. If you're looking for more puppy toy ideas, definitely check out this video. All about the best puppy toys to keep them busy. Now that we have the puppy pen set up, what's the next thing to set up? The crate. The crate is where they're going to sleep and rest. Your crate should be in a quiet place in your house, but not in a super secluded part of the house. We want our puppies to learn to settle in their crate, and in the beginning, that would be really hard for your puppy if they constantly were exposed to kids running by or other animals tempting and teasing them as they pass by. Your crate should only be big enough for your puppy to turn around and lay down in. Should not have puppy pee pads in it or water. This will only make your puppy need to go potty in the crate even more. We never want to teach a puppy that it's okay to go potty in their crate. Now, there are a ton more crate training tips that will help your puppies settle in their crate and learn to love your crate, so be sure to check out this video all about crate training. Since your puppy should have limited access to the home, if they're out of their crate or out of the puppy pen, you'll want to make sure you only allow access to one room at a time until they can earn access to other rooms. Now, they do earn access by not having accidents or chewing or destroying anything in that room. 
Typically, we give access to one room one month at a time. I recommend you start with the kitchen. As usually, this is the place in the house without carpet. It's easy to clean up accidents and you can keep a better eye on them if you're cooking meals or eating. Now, you can use these kinds of baby gates to keep your pup contained to one room. I love these ones because they're taller and it's harder for dogs to crawl up them since the bars are vertical. The link to this kind of gate is in the description below. If you allow your puppy in other rooms, use a leash to keep track of them so they don't sneak off to go potty until they learn to signal to you that they need to go outside. Now, if you want to teach your puppy to signal to you that they need to go outside, be sure to grab the free new puppy starter kit. Inside the kit is a potty training lesson and a bell training lesson, all about how to teach your pup to ring a set of potty bells to signal to you that they need to go outside. The link to the free kit is in the description below this video. Now, other things you can do to help puppy proof your home? Well, pick up absolutely everything that you do not want chewed up. Even if you bring your puppy home and they don't seem like the kind of dog that's a chewer, believe me, <laughs> most dogs are, but at the very least, they will be curious and they may pick it up and try to carry it around the house, like a remote or cords or batteries or shoes or important documents, rugs, kids' toys, you name it. <laughs> Remember, your puppy doesn't know the rules in your home just yet, so to them, everything is fair game to play with. If it's left out and your puppy eats it, you cannot blame your puppy. This is considered an owner error. I see this a lot with kids' toys. To a puppy, these look colorful, smell good, and they look like a lot of fun to play with, just like their own toys. So if they're on the floor, they're fair game to your puppy. Puppies do not understand the words you're speaking until you teach them what each command or behavior is. So telling them things like, you can't eat my brand new pair of shoes. Uh, they're not gonna know any better. It's like you're talking to the wall. Your puppy will have no idea of what you just said. So go around your house and remove or pick up anything loose that's lower than, let's just say the height of a kitchen table. I think a few of the most important things to pick up immediately would be all electrical cords and medications. Puppies love to chew on cords, but sadly, many have gotten electrocuted. I've gone into several students' homes and found prescription medications sitting on the end table next to the couch or on the coffee table. This is an emergency vet visit waiting to happen. Put those up so your puppy can't reach them. Put away the sharp objects like scissors. <laughs> I never knew how popular it was to have an end table next to the couch with a cup of pencils and pens and scissors in them until I started training and offering private lessons 20 years ago. So many people have reached out for help asking me to stop their dog from stealing scissors. <laughs> who knew? Most of these though came from homes where the women who were sewers kept their supplies next to the couch so they could sew while watching TV. Make, make sense, right? Well, when I worked at the vet's office, I also sew a few sewing needles that needed to be surgically removed too. Your puppy doesn't understand the danger. Just like a little child doesn't understand something can hurt them, neither does your dog. Now, if you're wondering where to put those pee pads, yeah, well, you can just put them right in the garbage. I'm a firm believer that if you want to quickly potty train your puppy, then using pee pads in the home is a big no-no, unless there's some sort of medical reason for either the human or the dog that prevents them from going outside. I have a video all about this topic here. Speaking of garbage, this reminds me, Definitely move your garbage can to a place your puppy cannot reach it. Or get a trash can that has a lock or a latch on it that would make it very difficult for your puppy to get into. Not only can your dog eat something dangerous in there, like chicken bones, plastic, or something worse, once your pup has a taste of something tasty in the trash, it will be a very hard habit to break. Many people have reached out to me for help on this matter. Honestly, the best thing to do is just remove the temptation from your dog altogether. Not only will they find the dangerous garbage, but more than likely, many other cleaning supplies and hazardous chemicals. You may need some child safety locks on your cupboard doors to keep your pup out. Next on the list, the plants. <laughs> many indoor plants are very toxic to dogs. 
check the list from the link in the description to see which plants you currently have that may need to be removed from where your puppy hangs out. Okay, next up, if you have a gym bag, a purse, a briefcase, a backpack, and tend to set it down on the floor as soon as you come in the home, find another place to keep it so that it's out of sight and off your pup's mind. All too often, people pack things in their bags that are super unsafe for puppies, such as gum, which usually contains xylitol. This is extremely toxic to dogs. Chocolates or other candies that can also make your pup sick. Now, you may have important paperwork with staples or paper clips in that bag, or dirty socks, which smell amazing to your dog. Do you know how much it costs to surgically remove a sock from your puppy's tummy or intestines? Well, it can cost over $1,500, and in some places, maybe even more than $3,000. While I'm thinking of it, do you use cleaner in your toilets? <laughs> I should think so. Make sure you do not use the kind that sit in the bowl and swish around with each flush. Otherwise, your puppy may drink the chemicals when you aren't looking. All right, one more thing to consider before we move outside of the home. Be sure to make a note of which foods in your home are toxic for your dogs. Things like chocolates, onions, and grapes are just, just a few off the top of my head. There are many other foods your dogs need to avoid, so make sure you check the description for more information on this. All right, moving outside the house. I want you to prep the outside of your house too, not just the inside. So make sure anything outside is removed that can be chewed or ingested, including things in the garage, like antifreeze, which actually tastes sweet to your dog. They don't know it's lethal. Or rat poison if you have it laying around the garage or around the perimeter of your home. If you have fishing poles with hooks on them leaning up against the garage wall, make sure those are picked up too. Many hooks have bait still on them and it can be tempting to your puppy, especially on your way out to go potty outside. Most puppies cannot stay outside by themselves until they're probably over a year old. Younger dogs tend to get bored easily outside and dig holes, chew patio furniture, decks, guest grill lines, <laughs> and so much more. Fence off areas where there are toxic plants and flowers. Be sure to block off any pools, ponds, or water fountains. And if you have a fire pit, do not allow your pup to have access to it. There may be some leftover s'mores in there, and that's definitely not safe for your dog, and neither is the charred wood, as it's also toxic to dogs. Check the backyard and look for anything that your pup might get caught on and unable to wiggle free. If you have loose or falling down fencing, be sure to repair it before your puppy's arrival. I want to make sure your home is super safe for your puppy's arrival. Be sure to rewatch this video again and know all the things I mentioned so you can set up a super safe house for you and your puppy. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified next week when I post another training lesson. Now, as long as your puppy pen and your crate and your gated kitchen are set up and all the items both inside and outside have been picked up so they can't be chewed up and you're following my advice to limit your puppy's space until they're a little more trustworthy, you're gonna be well on your way to a puppy-proofed house. Post any puppy-proofing questions in the comments below.